about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. This is Koinonia. Sekete belekete pranda kata baratus kete bariata, skata barata kata predekete baruta skoto balakata bariante kete pekete proskete ba. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Sinekete shalanta skata baranta skata prekete baruta sekete balata. E prakata barata kata predekete prekete kata baratus e embre lekatos kete balash kata pranta skete baratusia. The spirit is willing even though the flesh is weak. Pray. Shada baranta kata prendes kete bala kata prostede. Rikete baratu kata prade kete kete parada kata prendes kete bala kata. Sile baratu kete prende kete palata kata prade kete bala kata. You're edifying your spirit, man. You're rising to superior levels of power in the spirit. Power that prevails. Skana nekete paruta skate parato skate prende kete palata. Ke prondo skoto prondo skate parata kata prende kete balakata. Shele mana kata prende kete paruta skate parata kata. Skoto porokoto prende kete kete palada balakata pranda skate bekata. Shake a taste, Casting crowns, lifting hands, bowing hearts, that's what we've come to do. We cast our crowns, we lift our hands, we bow our hearts, that's what we've come to do. Casting crowns. Lifting hands, bowing hearts, what we come to do. We will rise in your name, Adonai, you reign on high. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai.
Tonight is both a teaching and an impartation service. Father, fresh fire, fresh glory upon my life and upon my destiny. Please lift your voice and cry to the Lord who is our maker. Shabbatata pakata prendekete bata. Fresh fire. Fresh fire from heaven. Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Are you praying? We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind? Spirit of victory. Blow, blow, say, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Upon my life, will you blow? Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. Oh. worship begin that never rests to the God of all flesh is my God and his name is Yahweh his name is Yahweh Yahweh God we worship you release your grace in greater dimensions upon our lives we're here because we are hungry we're here because we are desperate we're here because we are thirsty. We're here because we are determined to contact grace, to contact light. Don't be tired. This is part of the service. Ne la te produce He la tapa rata kate palakatia. Soto prono koto pahara kati palatia. You are here 
and we reverence you. We take our eyes away from all distractions. We focus on Jesus. Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, 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 your name is Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit in your work on earth is done. Leaving your Spirit in your work on earth is done. Forgiving your spirit, your work on earth is I believe you, Lord. I trust you. They that trust in you, indeed, they are like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken, but abides even forever. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. Your name, what is your name? Breathe, Lord. Just breathe your name upon me. Breathe. It's an atmosphere of glory. It's an atmosphere of power. It's an atmosphere of healing. It's an atmosphere of miracles. Don't be distracted. God is not wasting your time, I assure you. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known revealed. The glory of the risen Lord. You're the spirit of the sovereign Lord. Come and make your presence known with him. The glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it rain, let it rain, let it rain in us. 
Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your wisdom fall. Let the weight of your power fall. Let the weight of your favor fall. Let the weight of your healing fall. Let the weight of revival fall. Let the weight of your lifting just a few more minutes and we'll be seated there is a river that is flowing in this place flowing bringing power bringing light bringing grace you're drinking of a very ancient river oh for when you drink you will not thirst again indeed drink for healing Drink for power, drink for grace, drink to be a sign and a wonder. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of your glory, my life is full of your glory. And the people say, Holy, 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 Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Ah, we join the elders. Sing, Holy, Holy, Holy. We join the four and twenty. Holy, Holy. Is the Lord, is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? The earth is full of your glory. My life is full, my life is full. Prophesy to yourself everything about me. My life is full of your glory. Your home is full of his glory. My home is full of your glory. For the last time now. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. And the people say, Holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. He said, I wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And the elder tapped me and said, weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah. Even the root of David is worthy to open the book. You see, when we spend time like this, understand that we're not just wasting time. No, five minutes of a genuine encounter 
can be equivalent to 10 years 20 years of your results it is they that wait upon the lord that renew their strength many times we are in a rush rush to do everything lord attend to me i am busy he says he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. For thine sake, For thine is the, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let it be so in my life. Amen. 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 When you spend time like this in worship, let me tell you this. You will turn back and many challenges that would have been distractions, you will not find them again. This, this is the protocol of his presence. Yours is to be willing to invest. It's called the sacrifice of praise. Then you will find miracles. Then you will find open doors. Even things you need that you do not know. Yours is to create the atmosphere for him to come. When he comes, he never comes alone. He comes with your prayer requests. He comes with answers, a harvest of them. This is how we rise in this kingdom. Many of the things that we pray and we ask for can be resolved if we understand the art of worship. This is true. hallelujah for someone here i'm praying for you that the first impartation you will receive tonight is a hunger for the secret place in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the lord will grant us grace to minimize this mundane distractions and the deception of tea and bread god is not stupid he said the gentiles run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you have need of them any father that cannot cater for his family the bible says he has denied the faith and he's worse than an infidel yours is to stay and say lord i have needs but i stay this is how he builds us we stay when we stay we contact genuine power when we stay we contact wisdom one idea fired from heaven to your secret place can save you decades of shame decades of reproach it says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow if it is not the lord that builds that house i assure you they labor in vain if it's not the one that watches over the city the watchmen watch it but in vain 
we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him father we rededicate our lives again and we declare that we will never be too busy for your presence take away all the distractions that interrupt our fellowship take away the distractions the lies that the devil tells us that when we give you so much time is at the detriment of our success take away that deception from us help us to know and to see the value of your presence the value of your presence and tonight we have come to pray to receive to learn to be mentored to be discipled to grow to superior versions of ourselves grant us illumination by your spirit in the name of jesus christ amen and amen god bless you thank you for your sacrifice please be seated tonight i want you to be very sensitive it's a very prophetic meeting i really believe with all my heart that whilst i teach it will be for a short time that the power of god this week and next week i believe there's something extraordinary god is doing every service is spectacular but there is always something god is doing praise the name of the lord There is a woman who came here whilst you saw the woman who was testifying about a baby you are in the main auditorium here um, you came here trusting God for the fruit of the womb this is what I'm seeing this in my vision just help those under the anointing and let's let's pay attention the Lord is showing me a woman I'm not giving any particular time but I'm seeing that there is a woman who you are in this auditorium right now you came here and one of your requests while especially whilst you heard the our dear sister who was testifying about the miracle of the fruit of the womb you were praying and say lord how that you would do this for me please who is that person i want to pray for you now the lord is giving me i believe in miracles I truly believe in miracles the church is a solution center we do not waste the time of God's people every time invested in his presence has value always just those inside you don't have to those at the overflows you can connect by faith please just place your hand by faith on your stomach believe in god don't worry about what the medical report is just do what i'm asking you to do place your hand there believing he that cometh unto god must believe that he exists you will marvel and wonder at the testimonies that will arise from this truly god is powerful it's just that we don't give him time to build us to work on us and to deposit genuine power upon and over our lives very quickly please let's work with time if you're coming please come stand i just feel, felt stirred the power of the holy ghost is strong upon this place i'm seeing a wind just from my left to my right just moving across and the lord is bringing testimonies correcting medical conditions the word of god the bible declares is quick and powerful and and dislodging demons and wicked spirits that have been masquerading as all kinds of fertility issues they are devils and they are spirits and i cast them out by the spirit of god let god's people go now any spirit that is back of this delay in conception it doesn't matter whether whether you have a womb or not whether there is a problem with it or not that's not what we're praying we are declaring in the name of jesus christ that every spirit that is back of this this situation this reproach 
by the power that raised Christ from the dead we declare in the name of Jesus Christ that they leave you once and for all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ oh. and now I minister life let there be life life to every dead organ life to every dead womb every malfunctioning ill functioning womb hear the word of the lord we correct that anomaly by the power that raised christ from the dead and in the name of jesus i declare unto you according to the time of life return with your miracle children according to the time of life return with your miracle children in the name of jesus christ let the sound of rejoicing never depart from your habitation that those who have laughed with you they will come and they will celebrate and rejoice with you this we decree this we declare and because you believe it we declare it established in the name of jesus christ god bless you please go and return with your testimonies hallelujah let's celebrate jesus Just help those under the anointing. Witnesses, part one. Witnesses, part one. We're examining a two-part series today and next week on the topic, witnesses. There is classification by identification. That means the classification that attempts to describe our oneness with Christ, the product of what he has done, and the oneness that we now enjoy. So there is classification based on identification. A few scriptures, let's run through a few scriptures we're studying the Bible now. Romans chapter 8, please help us media from verse 16. Romans 8, 16 to 18 tells us clearly that the Spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. You see that now. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So the Bible tells us that we are heirs of God and even joint heirs with Christ. Second Peter chapter 1, popular scripture, when we read from verse 3 and 4, the Bible says that we have been made um, according as his divine power hath given us unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue verse 4 says whereby are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of his divine nature we are called partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lost second corinthians 5 and verse 17 tells us it says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creation all things are passed away behold all things are become new galatians 4 and verse 7 be patient as i run through these scriptures establishing our identification believers are classified according to identification it says wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son and if a son then an heir of god even through christ second corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 calls us the righteousness of god in christ it says for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, the most probably, the most classic rendition from verse 1 of our, a thorough theological exegesis of our oneness with Christ. And you have, he quickened, the Bible says, who were dead in trespasses and sins. We're reading to verse 6. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as others. 
Hallelujah, verse 4. It says, But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, pay attention, had quickened us together with Christ. For by grace are ye saved. Verse 6, it says, And had raised us up, say amen, amen. together, and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ. Now, please listen. These are the fundamentals of our curriculum for growth and maturity you have to know who you are in christ and that this classification is based on our identification are we together now a number of other scriptures but these ones have have given us sufficient to show us from different angles how that we have been joined to christ but then the second classification is based on our function and assignment. So the first classification is based on our identification. But the second classification is based on our function and our assignment. A few scriptures, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. Now you see what we are called. Now the description begins to change according to functions. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them so we are not only joint heirs we are not only sons of God we are his workmanship Matthew chapter 14 chap Matthew chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16 Jesus is teaching now ye are the light of the world here's another name we are called according to function we are light a city, he says, that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. Next verse. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light to all that are in the house. Last verse. It says, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. When you begin to read from verse 13, it tells us you are the salt of the earth, he says. That if the salt has lost its saltiness or its savor, wherewith shall it be salted again? It's, it's no good except to be thrown on a foot and trampled by men. So he calls us light. He calls us salt. John 15 and verse 16. John 15 and verse 16. It says, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. This is no strange word to us here. To ordain means to commission, to authorize, to legitimize. That ye should go forth and bring forth fruits. He calls us fruit bearers. And that your fruit should remain. Our classification according to functions. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. The Bible says, now then, we are ambassadors. Hallelujah. So you're not only a son or a daughter. You're not only joint heir. He says we are ambassadors, representatives for Christ. Revelations chapter 5 and verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign so here the Bible calls believers kings calls believers priests last scripture first Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 very classic rendition it says but ye are a chosen generation now look the names now a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people the Bible says mandated to show forth the praises of him who had called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light so the Bible calls believers different names according to identification our oneness with Christ and according to our functions According to 1 John chapter 1, the gospel of John, John chapter 1 from verse 6, the Bible uses a very interesting expression that we would find 
being used consistent in scripture right to revelation it says there was a man sent from god his name was john the bible never says here interestingly that that man was a baptist scripture does not even recognize him as a baptist the bible does not even say he was a prophet the first description given according to john's synoptic account of this man who we later would call the baptist would later call a prophet was a witness the same john came for a witness his assignment to bear witness to the light that through his witness all men might believe here was john's assignment john did not come to prophesy john did not come to use water he came for a witness acts chapter 1 and verse 8 we're discussing being a witness now jesus this was jesus after his resurrection the bible says he tarried with them again for a period of 40 days teaching them the matters or the things that pertain unto the kingdom and here he was having his final words with them so that he would levitate to heaven and he was talking about the restoration of the nation of israel and they asked him a question they said would you at this time restore the nation of israel he said it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put within his care verse 8 but you shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and to the end that ye shall be now he uses the same term for john for the church jesus calls us witnesses unto me then he begins to define the geography of witness both in jerusalem and in judea and in samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth revelations chapter one from verse one the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servant things which must surely come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto John we're reading to say five or six the key verse is verse five but let's read on who bear record of the word of God listen carefully and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw verse three Blessed is he that readeth and that hear the words of this prophecy. Say, I am blessed. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Verse 4. It says, John, unto the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Verse 5. Read with me, please, if you are a Christian. Ready? One to read. And from Jesus Christ, who is the, hold on, Jesus here is called himself a faithful witness. A witness that was faithful to the latter. Jesus himself is called witness. There are not many times when the Bible uses the same description for Jesus for believers for instance god is light believers are also called light are we together yes now here jesus is called the faithful witness the same way he called us validating the fact that he said as he is so are we in this life a witness we are witnesses now write this down please who is a witness what does it mean to be a witness please pay attention remember that every time we converge and we gather the primary assignment of a true shepherd is to mentor to teach to train to raise to build to supply the spiritual meal of knowledge and understanding hallelujah a witness very interesting dictionary definition is one who has knowledge about a matter 
one who sees an event happening is called a witness if you get this description it should trouble you immediately a witness is one who has knowledge about a matter a dictionary definition one who sees an event happening so how in the world do we qualify to be witnesses when physically speaking we were not there more than two thousand years ago jesus came he died and now we are proposing an idea and according to the dictionary definition it says a witness is one who should have been there to have seen that event this is my definition of a witness a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is a validator of a claim another definition a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know a witness is one who provides testimonial evidence this is a legal expression one who provides testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know is a witness so a witness is a validator of a claim usually in legal terms now a witness is not needed until there is a contention of a claim is that true you do not need a witness in the court of law we have judges here and magistrates bless your heart and when you go to the court of law you do not need a witness until and except and unless there is a contention over a claim then you introduce a witness watch this now a witness is a validator of a claim so if jesus said the spirit of god comes upon you you shall be witnesses that means that we are mandated to be validators of certain claims that he made for instance he said he was the son of god for instance he said god is love for instance he said it is not the father's will that all men should perish there are many many claims that jesus made god made from scripture jesus came as the express image of the father and he buttressed on those claims and jesus left the disciples with a warning and a caution that there are men and there are forces on earth that will spend their life investing their moment their days their intelligence to devalidate those claims and he said there are many scattered across your region from jerusalem he said to samaria to judea to the uttermost part of the earth i am mandating you to spread yourselves across the length and breadth of this side of my kingdom with a singular assignment to prove that everything i said is not a lie witnesses are we together so a witness has an assignment of validating claims the reason why we need to teach this is because the average believer does not really understand the responsibility dimension of being in the faith life largely speaking our, our theology ends just in an appreciation of what Jesus did on the cross and then the fact that there are all kinds of blessings accorded us by reason of his death burial and resurrection and that is correct but there are responsibilities in this kingdom and the primary responsibility of a believer is not to be a businessman listen carefully it's not to be a man of God it's not to be a pilot an engineer many times we define ourselves by the geography of the witness not the revelation of the witness we're going to be discussing that most of the things we call ourselves i am an apostle i am a prophet i am a banker a ceo i'm a judge i'm a politician those are not the things and the people that we are those are just the geography of the witness regardless the geography the assignment is the same 
step into that system and you have an assignment to not rest until that system comes under the governing influence until the claims of jesus is received and institutionalized within that sphere you are not done are we together yes, sir. witnesses everybody say i'm a witness here's the average believers understanding about the faith life if you're born again and you're fortunate to be led and mentored by a pastor that has sufficient spiritual understanding as far as scripture and doctrine is concerned then you are taught and mentored along the lines of your right in christ and so on and so forth and when you know that then we get busy with our lives isolating them from our faith life so this is church and this is god's thing are we together now so from monday down till saturday or whatever non-church day we believe that god stay out of my business i'm trying to build a career i'm trying to raise children i'm trying to get married i'm trying to have children i'm trying to have a business i'm trying to make money i'm trying to survive in nigeria we say and so we have created a dichotomy that when it has to do with the things of god we do it when we come to church we sing praises we fall under the anointing we stand up we learn we share fellowship and then we go back to what we call our normal lives the bible never teaches that there is no dichotomy your primary assignment here god is not caesar don't say give to caesar what belongs to caesar god is the owner of everything if you give to caesar give to caesar but god is not caesar is either his lord of everything or his lord of nothing at all so there is no such thing as church and then my life no your life is interwoven into one singular assignment you are a witness sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday witness on jeans a witness on suit witness are we together now pay attention please if you do not understand this and you create a dichotomy to your christian experience you will number one give the devil room to shred the other non-church parts of your life in pieces he will occupy you and waste your time so you find people say oh god hold on i'm trying to make ends meet and god says who created this dichotomy you go and read your bible there was no such thing as god's affair and our affair all the people who had alternatives were idol worshippers and they paid for it or backsliding believers when the jews fell apart and they left god they went back to their own thing read the bible there's only one subject one pursuit kingdom that was why they had children kingdom that was why they married kingdom that was why they lived well kingdom that was why god showed up kingdom that was why they prospered kingdom that was why they multiplied kingdom now we have kingdom and other things the other things god took time to warn us about is the reason why we don't have time the time 24 hours was calculated to be enough if your focus is kingdom the moment you add something outside of god's original design time will never be enough please pay attention he calls us witnesses so here's what we do we believe the only spiritual time and moment in our life is when we're having a devotional in the morning or when we are praying or when we are fasting the moment we say in jesus name and say amen what we mean is god i've given you your quota allow me do whatever i want to do if there's any need for emergency you just hang on i will call on you to help in my affair and now he's watching no wonder many people live lives that seem to have a semblance of success and then after many years of toiling and laboring we end up in frustration carry all kinds of diseases and sicknesses that come from worry we are angry we are frustrated because we think that god scammed us and used us for his agenda 
and did not give us a portion for our own agenda it's one of the number one reason why people are afraid of giving god everything they suspect he will interrupt their agenda and he will are we blessed tonight witnesses let me tell you this according to scripture everything in a believer's life every moment every activity must synergize itself to one goal one goal one goal being a witness validating a claim revealing jesus and bringing glory to him can i tell you this your life will find such joy when everything about you is connected to being a witness connected to the revelation of jesus connected to kingdom come now when you are trying to trust god for resources and your motive is that you will be an effective witness there's no need to be ashamed of it you can now pray with boldness lord bless me and open doors for me to be a millionaire and a billionaire do you know why because you can defend that desire if they ask you why do you like money say no 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 don't mistake me it is not a blind pursuit for money i have found out that the nature of my witness requires that there should be sufficient resources and so like a faithful person in pursuit of being an effective witness my first assignment based on the job description is to be a billionaire now you can stand tall and you are not just a money monger because your pursuit is connected to kingdom come are we together now there are people who the geography of your witness for instance requires that you are in government if we ask you why are you pushing the issue of politics why does it look like a do or die affair if you tell us look all my life i just sense i'm a politician that may be a sufficient sociological reason from from the kingdom standpoint there is no justification for that pursuit let me tell you this the condition to secure god's commitment is that behind the desire for your activity there must be a revelation and a motivation that i am a witness As a man of God, why do you want a crowd of so many people? I think it's so that I can, it will be that I'm anointed. No, God does not do business that way. A witness, a validator. You see, let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, people of God. The reason why it looks like God does not answer many prayers is because he vets the motivation behind them not just what you are asking for or seeking for remember it does not take god time to bless to lift to change it is the corruption of our motive that makes it seem as if his ears are deafened to our prayers so when you say god give me something he does not just say okay i died for you take he's not a stupid god just because he is love does not mean he's a fool he moves at the backside of your desire and vets and checks the motivation and he finds out that there is such a blind carnal desire to prove a point to do all sorts of things and he says no the urgency of my assignment and the desire for witness will not allow me to invest in this corrupted motive your first assignment therefore would be to purify your motive to align it to kingdom come is god helping us you know why jesus was called the faithful witness the faithfulness part there was because when he came even though he was the word he had no business pursuing any agenda of his from day one at age 12 when his colleagues were jumping around and trying to understand how their environment was jesus was about his father's business that's what made him a faithful witness at the height of his fame when many of us would not even survive the things that come with that level of honor he was careful to say i do not do the will of myself he says i only do what i see my father do what level of submission and brokenness and total surrender no wonder the father said this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased you have become my thoughts and my intentions in action 
everybody say i am a witness a validator of a claim satan look up please and his cohorts demons have created systems and structures to see to it that jesus christ and the reality of his lordship is not understood and is not enthroned in the hearts of men and across every strata of human activities they have used all kinds of strategies remember when jesus resurrected the first strategy was to use money and pay people and say just say the disciples came and carried his body is still the strategy till today satan will pay and do anything provided you will switch and change your assignment and listen if you do not understand this teaching we will keep having piles of people in the church and will lose the potency of the power of god and the ability to transform society with the gospel a witness so if there are five politicians whilst all of them are celebrating election and this one is saying i won pdp i won apc i won this one and everybody is celebrating and saying all sorts of things you return back and you are not party conscious you are assignment conscious you see that now now that you are there you don't just sit down and say now i've suffered my first assignment is to recover every money that i've have the years that the canker worm and the caterpillar has stolen no sir no sir that is a mindset that is not kingdom see when we talk about defending god's interest we are not talking about being a fanatic god's interest is not for christians alone god's interest is for all men you if you don't understand god's interest it will look like some negative tribal or partisan kind of thing no god's interest is the secret to peace is the secret to joy and development if you truly pursue god's interest all and sundry will benefit from your leadership not just for politics but for everyone you have to know the god whose interest you want to defend he is love he is light he loves all men this is the one whose interest you are defending are we blessed tonight yes i live my entire life conscious of the fact that i am a witness and if i ever will be involved in anything i have to find kingdom come in it if kingdom come is not represented i am not interested it's as simple and as honest as that can i tell you this we must get to a point in our lives where everything we do everything we do it's not just that we are believers but we are passionately we are indoctrinated with this revelation that god is depending on me to validate something about him he's using me like a painter's canvas and a brush there is something the world does not know about him there is a lot of misrepresentation about god and he sends you go and correct that perception so in the business world for instance they make all kinds of statements like until you cut corners you cannot prosper and yet the bible says god can help men prosper in the dignity of kingdom integrity but that confusion remains in that space because there are no witnesses so god would have to raise men the generic name is being a witness but he will push you to the geography of your assignment more on that next week but my assignment today is to wake you up from just the consciousness of ceo the consciousness of apostle prophet the name he calls us witness i'm a witness you are a witness a validator so anywhere i see the name of the lord going down the drain don't say it's none of my business my that is exactly my business it is my assignment to walk in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit and devise a strategy to correct that narrative so if i hear people say god does not heal again god does not help people again aha my ears are itching because you are calling my name there 
if i hear that people serve god and go down there is no dignity serving god it does not pay to serve jesus uh -uh, uh -uh. there is a misrepresentation of the father's intention you must fraternize with satan for you to be a gospel artist or an artist or whatever to go far you must fraternize with powers you must bow down to spirits then your ears are itching no and god says let me use you as a as a as a sample to show men that you can rise let me tell you this you have not yet seen the power of god until you are ready to be a witness you have not yet seen the favor of god you have not yet seen his ability to shift systems and structures until you are ready to be a witness a witness has a point to prove not your point god's point let me tell you how the nature of our witness is for a long time god will keep quiet so that the accusation will be clear do not mistake in god's silence god's silence is a strategy that every time they say no one rises in this family let's go back and serve idols and he seemed to keep quiet and you are saying god move now uh -uh. that's not how he walks he keeps quiet because in his realm time does not matter in one day he can do anything your entire lifetime is less than a day so when you say god hurry up he said i don't understand that language hurry means what eternity minus five years does not mean anything to him so he keeps quiet listen carefully when it's time for him to arise when he prepares a witness he will give that witness something in the court of law that is called a token of truthfulness the name is evidence when you see god silent it is because he's preparing his evidence a witness is useless in the court of law if you do not come with evidence your evidence is a token of truthfulness the bible says the end of all strife is when you bring a token of truthfulness mm. one who provides a testimonial evidence of what he or she claims to know sit down and write this please what is an evidence an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is anything presented in support or defense of an assertion an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact please write it down an evidence is a means of establishing the validity of a fact hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16 hebrews 6 and verse 16 for verily men swear by the greater and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife this is another name for evidence is called an oath of confirmation you stole my money do you have a witness yes go and bring the witness whoever come were you there yes did you see it yes what is your evidence that's the next question woe betides a witness who does not have an evidence it takes time as security people it takes time to build an evidence so all the journey all your experience is good and bad all the painful things the things that the bible says we know that all things work together it is a journey of building the evidence to your witness all the times of pain the times of prayer in the night that looks like god is not answering you 
God, why are you silent? He said, you don't know the case you are sent to defend. That's why you don't know the kind of witness I have to build. Two years may not build that kind of case. You are supposed to present God to a family that has believed in idols for 150 years. Oh Moses, a rod will not be enough. Pharaoh is a wizard. A rod will not convince Pharaoh enough. You will need a rod. You will need signs and wonders. You will need miracles of nature. You will even need his firstborn. Please sit down. hear me god is calling you into ministry and after 10 years you are saying lord release me he says stay just keep praying god what is it about my own ministry my colleagues have gone ahead stay don't go anywhere let me tell you he's building evidence there is a level of power and grace that will come upon your life when he shoots you like an arrow in one day you will do what has not been done in one year hold on not everything in your life that looks negative is negative is the building of the evidence hold on do you know sometimes Ask the people who work with CIA and intelligence for them to build evidence sometimes they will have to subject themselves to be part of the problem in disguise is that true could that be why you came from the family you came from could that be why when things were working for others it didn't work for you God had to how else will they believe God lived if you did not pass through such a thing so he started follow the prophetic drama your life has been acting that you are not seeing seen one both parents go to be with the lord from your birth and you are wondering lord why is my life like this and heaven the script writer my goodness the script writer is writing and just when the car would have hit you when you said jesus is left and you thought no 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 it's part of the whole thing a day will come when you stand and say jesus is lord if anyone dares to say prove it you're going to ask them i hope you have time because i have an overwhelming evidence So choose which one you want to see. Is it the fact that he lifted me from the married clay? Is it from the fact that he blessed me in the midst of my enemies? Is it from the fact that he waited for every negative prophecy to finish? Then he started changing it one by one in the presence of everyone. Is it that he took me to a foreign land and blessed me there? Which of the evidences do you need that he's alive? And heaven stands to say, my goodness, my God, what a witness what a witness indeed what a witness indeed hmm. as a man of god hear me do not interpret things from a carnal standpoint it takes time to build evidence the stronger the evidence the more effective the witness so jesus said the ultimate evidence that i am from god destroy this temple after three days since death is the last enemy that can be destroyed in your realm if i say i am lord you will not believe it whoever owns the earth must be able to exit out of the earth and return himself back so take my life if i come back then we'll see and they said with all pleasure we even release an arm robber for your sake we've been planning to kill you now that you've offered yourself with jesus joy when he hung upon that cross he didn't hang for five minutes he hung long enough for history to capture his stay there when they were driving him to golgotha it was painfully slow are you seeing why you read the bible and sometimes it annoys you just summarize it from pontius pilate he died no 
it's not witness enough it's not evidence enough so he begins to give the details they slapped him and he was quiet and he said i can call ten thousand angels yet i keep quiet and then when he hung upon the cross he said eloi eloi lamak sabachthani take notes that the father turned his back the 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 new birth theology they did not come from the evidence the entire exegesis of the new creation was derived from the witness paul studied all the evidences and that's where he built the case for the new believer i have been crucified with christ he said that happened only because there was an evidence of the cross today the sign of the christian faith is that cross nobody can deny that he hung on a cross when he died watch this when he resurrected he was not in a rush to come out he insisted until there was one person to see him and when mary saw him she said rabboni he said don't touch me i'm just happy you have seen it now run quickly before you forget run and go and tell the people that you've seen me i'm alive Hmm. God is not done with all the arsenals of his evidence there is the last one coming one glorious morning believers and non-believers alike whether you believe in him or not there will be a shout of a trumpet that one does not need speaker we don't need to buy line arrays from heaven when you hear that your banking your schooling your preaching oh may it happen during koinonia i drop the mic for you and i say save johnny we've been saying repent if you are not interested that will be the ultimate evidence no event in human history would have ever happened like that a massive disappearance of people suddenly the king of kings who say no confusion you didn't believe in me now you watch me in the moment a twinkling of an eye is only you who will see it oh all those who are not born again will not even know anything has happened they will just know that the earth has divided almost into two where are the other people this will become a bestseller after the rapture because this will be the only valid compass that helps people back no other book will matter what else is there and people will have to come and check we'll leave all these bibles for them they will read it hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you